I'm being joined tonight by a professor of law and the longest served DG of the law school, a former dean of the faculty of law at the State University, and presently teaching law at Bayes University in Abuja, a law teacher by excellence, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Ernest Ojuku, joins me here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Prof, for joining us. Thank now. you. Thank you. Give us a sense of what this means. Um, it's clear that the president wanted autonomy for the judiciary, which in any case, the judiciary is the arbiter and has ruled on the side of the state against the position of the president. But the court has said the president's decision is unconstitutional. Actually, the, the decision is not even in favor of the state. The decision is in favor of the federal government and the peoples of Nigeria. Hmm. Yeah, the state lost the, the, the state lost the case, actually, when you look at the issues that they took to the court for decision. So declaring it as the decision of the president as unconstitutional doesn't mean that the president or the executive arm of government lost out. Yeah, it doesn't mean because the, the real uh, case brought by the state uh, is to divest themselves of the burden of carrying the capital uh, funding of the judiciary and transferring it to the federal government. That's actually the substance of their case. And the and court decided that no, the state will still continue to bear the burden of the capital funding of the judiciary. That's perhaps not part of the popular, the picture that a lot of Nigerians were seeing from the judgment. Today. Yeah. That's actually very insightful. Yeah. And another, I mean, if you can explain further on that. Okay, so when the executive order came, it, it meant that the funding for the state legislature and judiciary should go directly to them. But for, we saw some uh, uh, governors yeah. say, look, we are the ones that are responsible. They bring the budget, they sign, they sign the budget, they, they defend the budget, yeah. and they execute the budget. So the federal government cannot have the power to tell them how to spend the money. That's impunity. That's the impunity of the state governors, uh, the impunity of the state in, in Nigeria. In fact, the problem about democracy in Nigeria is, has been created 10 times more than the federal government by the states. Uh, the states even when we are crying, people are crying for restructuring, restructuring gives the states more, more powers, give them uh, more function, more responsibilities. This, the few ones that the constitution has provided, the states have refused to uh, carry those responsibilities and obey the constitution. The, 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 we, even, even up to the constitutional amendment that further enhanced the independence, fiscal independence, the independence of the judiciary, especially the fiscal, fiscal part, uh, the the uh, judicial uh, officer, uh, staff of the judiciary went to court, even got a judgment against the entire state for them to obey the constitution that gives independence, fiscal independence to the judiciary. The constitution is so clear on who and how the monies of the judiciary should be managed. Now, the, the, the state government still refused to obey those, the constitutional rule, refused to obey the court orders, and even when Jusun, the staff of the judiciary, went, did a second strike, the longest one, the president only intervened and said, look, we can't continue this way. So he issued the executive order, drawing attention, because that's all that the president did. He was drawing attention to the breach, breaches of the, of the state government. He says, go and pay, go and obey that constitution. That's just what the president said. The president wasn't making any new law. Mm. He said, go and obey the constitutional provision. Go and obey that court order. Pay over the monies due to the judiciary, to the judiciary, as, as and when due. Or I will take it as source and give them to the judiciary. Does the president have the power? That is, the, the, that, is that aspect. That's only one-tenth of, that, of the case that was decided today. That's only the aspect the court, majority of the court said, no, the president doesn't have that power to become the policeman mm. for both the federal Constitutionally speaking, does the president, does the executive have there are no, power? There is no proof, there is no express provision in the constitution giving any, uh, the president that power to control the state. Mm. And so even though we haven't read the exact words of the, uh, of the judgment to know how, what uh, frame of mind the justice is used in the, making the decisions. Uh, but if you look at, if you read the snippets from the minority decision, uh, Justice Abaji, Ab uh, he says, uh, Justice Abaji said, uh, look, Yes, there's no express provision saying the president can seize your money and take it to the right person. Constitutional provider. But because what the president has done in the order is not to create a law or any new rule, he's only trying to enforce the constitutional provision, which he has a responsibility to. Mm. And therefore, 
that the executive order is not unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. That's the minority decision, which I applaud. Because you can't, you can't read constitutionalism uh, in, 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 in other people's context. You must read it in our context. You have a, a constitutional provision, a clear constitutional provision that gives, the, the, tells the states what to do with judiciary money. You have a court order telling the, judici the, 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 the uh, governors to obey the constitutional provisions, and yet they refuse to obey 36 of them, 36 states. It, and it didn't matter to them whether it came, they, they, they were from PDP or, uh, or APC or any other party. They all ganged up. All the parties ganged up to disobey our constitutional provision and kill the democracy. And so that's the basis, the context in which the minority decision it should be applauded. It can be, you know, tapeting all our provisions. But the Relation minority to... decision will not stand. Oh, surely. The majority uh, decision stands. It could one day, it could one day emerge yeah. because uh, as uh, more litigations may, will arise in our development. Mm. It could one day, the Supreme Court may one day make other decisions that will buy that idea to make further decisions. Because we must, re we must interpret our question based on our experience and context. Why would taxes govern us? Decide instead of paying the judiciary their money, we will we'll go and challenge the federal government for telling us, reminding us, reminding us to obey the constitution. I mean, uh, the likes of uh, I remember Olisa Bakuba yeah. at uh, when he was uh, the president of the bar, you know, and this issue also came up. Uh, you remember, Prof, that recently Jusun uh, almost shut down. The entire judiciary, the, the courts were closed for several weeks, and there were protests on this same matter. Uh, the, the state government disagreed in some states and all of that. But the question is, the Olisak Bakuba's case that he took in Ekiti State, and he took up the federal government on the powers of the, of the judiciary to be independent. But right on this chair that you were there to sit in, the Attorney General of the Federation was he was expressing his frustration about the pace of justice delivery in the, in the nation. And he said, look, things are slow. But the CJN came and responded to say, it is not our fault. It is what the executive or any other system of the government has provided for us. Is the judiciary, in the true sense of it, independent? Surely not. Not in Nigeria. Definitely not. There are so many aspects of judiciary, of judiciary independence. And we have not seen any, the, that independence in any form. At the federal level, in relation to their money, the judiciary money, I can tell you the federal government has done well, very well. At least uh, since uh, 1999, the judiciary, the judiciary, the judiciary have been receiving the, 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 for the federal, for the the, the, the the courts managed by the federal government. They have been receiving their fund at least within the, uh, the budget level. In fact, in the last uh, five, six years, uh, apart, except for one year, the, the, the judiciary received 100% of their budget, budgeted fund. So in relation to that, the federal government has done very well. There's also the, 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 the aspect of interference, executive interference, is 10 times more at the state level than at the, at the federal level. The, the aspect of appointment of judges, the, the governors have hijacked the, the process of appointment of judges at state level almost 98% of the times. So, so it, it's so bad, at, at, especially at the state level. There's, we, don't, we can't talk about judicial independence in Nigeria mm. now. Well, can you give us a sense of the interpretation and the spirit of the majority judgment and, and what the implication is? I, I wish I had, I had read the full judgment, but I, I have an idea. You know, one of the, uh, the reasons may be that if you give a person authority like a president of a country, a power that is not expressed in the constitution, that he may abuse it in another respect. We remember uh, under President Obasanjo when um, he insisted that states that had created local governments outside the constitutional local governments must close them down or he won't send the states their fund. Lagos state refused to at least show that they, had, they were going to obey that directive. And Obasanjo seized the monies of Lagos state for several years. And uh, uh, even when there was a court order saying release their money, he still refused to release their money. The money was re released only by the next president, Yaradua. So apparently the, the Supreme Court must be afraid of such situations where if you give uh, an African leader um, certain loop, uh, leverage to uh, operate our, in our context, that he may use it also against our interests and become a dictator.
So this must be the reason why they don't want to allow the presidents, who are already very powerful, to extend their, their powers beyond the express provisions of the Constitution. I mean, it then also means that uh, signing an executive order is, is a form of lawmaking. It uh, is a form of lawmaking, but... Uh, the, the, the general principle is that whatever executive order is signed must not be unconstitutional, must not go contrary to the provisions of the Constitution. If it does, yeah, the executive order, like any law made by the legislature that runs contrary to the Constitution, will be struck down by the courts. Mm. So executive orders are supposed to be such light on issues that are born in, in the country. They are supposed to, be, uh, to bring attention to issues. That's what executive order really does. It doesn't, it doesn't create a new, new law, so to say. It doesn't create any, any new rule. But when in the presidential system uh, in, in the US, when the executive order is made, uh, it's, it's kind of the president saying, look, out of 100 things, my priority now is this one. And my ministers and secretaries and officers of state, please implement this as my priority. That's what executive order is, mm. actually. This is a priority list. So. Uh, in interpretation of the majority decision of the court today, uh, if you can give us a sense of what this means. So yeah. the executive order 10 right. is dead. Yes, the president cannot seize the monies of states to enforce the constitution. That's what the, the bottom court. line of the, of, the, the of, the, of, the, of the majority decision. You cannot, you don't have the power to, to force the states to obey the constitution. You can't seize their money and say, because they have breached the constitution, you will flog them into line. But somebody has to flood these states into line. I don't know how we're going to do it. It reminds me, Prof, of the very heated argument between Professor Issa Sage on the issue of federalism. Mm -hmm. That lecture that Professor Issa Sage gave mm -hmm. in the University of Benin, mm -hmm. and which uh, uh, the uh, Justice of the Supreme Court had to respond to, to it on our mood of operating federalism, that the federating units should have some sense of independence. And you say, look, Flogging them into line. Also, these states are saying, look, the federal government is, too, is carrying too much burden. Um, people talk about restructuring. How do we fix it? That's the problem. It, it, this, this is one of the forms of restructuring. In fact, we have got more policy statements from the judiciary on restructuring than, any, than the legislature or any other group of people in Nigeria. We have had se several cases by, from the courts dealing on the powers of state and powers of the federal government, the powers of local government showing clearly the demarcations. Mm. And in this particular one, the states have refused to take their own power by obeying the rules. So the problem now is for those who are clamoring for a structure, if we cannot obey one simple rule in a restructured form as it is, as, as bad as it may be, look, what we guarantee that we're going to benefit from if a, a bigger restructuring Mm. Uh, what I would have thought that the states should obey the simple ones that were provided in the constitution, is this which is the only reason, which is the only way they can begin to even claim some some ground from the federal government, even where the constitution did not give them power. If the federal government or the APC government said it's difficult for us to implement the restructuring agenda awesomely, without and they say we want to do it in piecemeal, is it is today's judgment a dampener for them? The APC, the the, the government of the day. On the, the, federal, of the, the federal government. Oh yeah, you see, the federal government is not, you know, it has a duty to, to the people of Nigeria, to the people of Nigeria, to ensure that we, our constitution is obeyed, to ensure that our democracy survives. And any democracy, any that doesn't have independence of judiciary, will not survive. So it should be a worrying issue for the federal government or anybody who is actually a human being in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this, our governors know that. If we do not give in the, allow the independence of the judiciary to be enhanced, that we, sh we will never get the democracy. In, in Nigeria. Because uh, apart from the issue of funding, funding seems to have taken uh, a more popular um, uh, attention compared to every other aspect of these other ten. Is also uh, people have raised question mark on even appointment of judges, which also has questioned the powers of the court and the powers of the judiciary to be able to be uh, to perform his role, the constitutional role. Where do we go from here then? Uh, from uh, today, I mean, uh, it does look like the Supreme Court has given its verdict, as, except if there is any other law that comes after this. But the law now is that 
which probably re return to status quo, isn't it? No, no that's what we are. I mean, the, the Supreme Court just restated the position of the Constitution now. Look, the states, you have, you have the duty to fund the judiciary, mm. at least uh, at the level of uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, that the federal government does with its own courts. You, do, you don't, you know, give, dash them money and, and claim that you are giving them money. Some states think that because they are building new courts for, uh, for the judiciary, that have, that, that's judicial independence. Meanwhile, they are the, people, the, 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 the executive people are controlling the process. And they got the, 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 judiciary, the heads of judiciaries in those states don't know when they are going to change their cars, for example. It's not in their power, so no. So if, they, if their cars go rickety and suddenly governor appears and dashes them cars, you know, they become beholden to the governor. Mm -hmm. And that's, these are the problems. So the governor will say, look, I've gave them cars. So why are they clamoring for more money or for independence? Because even in some states, uh, there, there are claims that some judges' salary has remained the way it's been every state, for years. Every state, from, 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 the CG, from the chief justice of Nigeria to any other judge, the, the salary you start from one day, the salary you retire with. It, has, wow. it doesn't change for a second. And that does not and apply it doesn't to change, any It doesn't determine whether or not you are senior or junior. Unfortunately, the, yeah. the judges will claim they cannot talk and that's, for themselves. And this salary is, is about the salary they have been on since about 2004. Wow. Yeah. And it doesn't operate in any aspect of the civil service? No, 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 no. You, you keep rising with your money. I mean, you keep... Um, uh, judges uh, cannot go on strike. They, yeah. can't, they can't really speak for yeah. themselves. Yeah. But what is the biggest anomaly for you, Prof? Compared to other nations of the world, yeah. at least let's compare to the United States yeah. that we sometimes want to copy, uh, sometimes their yeah. judiciary, or even where we borrowed our common law from, the, uh, the British uh, system. In relation to the in relation to the independence of judiciary. other aspects no, of the work. The independence of judiciary. Is this what is the biggest anomaly for you? The biggest anomaly is not allowing them to do their work within their capacity. Mm. I, I, I'm, nobody's saying that you, you must give, um, Sokoto State must give the same amount of money to the judiciary as Abia State or River State. But let there be, you know, consistency. And let the judiciary know, decide, the, within the general purview of budgeting of the state, that this is our fund. We we'll know when we we'll need to buy a typewriter. We we'll know when we we'll need to change our, our lights. And it's not for the Without government. running to the, the government, or yeah, and to the, the, the chief judges go to the government, 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 government houses and sit down as like guests and wait for hours until the governor wants them in. And, and if you are not a chief judge, who is, who is not ready to subjugate their values to going to sit down and run around governors? You will not get anything done. The, the judges many times need medical attention because they're overworked. Mm. Uh, you can't get the, so funding for medical attention for judges so unless you go begging the governors, even on an individual basis. So the, go, the individual judges become handicapped. They can't make decisions against certain uh, political, uh, political, political, political leaders in the state mm. because if they do, they won't get money for medicals. They won't you know, go for training. They, they, they won't get funding for, to fix the, the roof of the court. Because the governor is going to give it to them as if it's a handout. Now give them, if, they, if you decide, if based on the budgeting system and, and the science, and you decide 10,000 Naira is for what to get in the year, give them the 10,000 Naira so they can manage it. If they fail, then we'll come after them. So because there are other issues, Prof, which yeah. I would like you to touch on, whether or not uh, there's even a proper audit system uh, within the judiciary, and that's probably the reason why there's going to need to oversight the judiciary if that is needed, and perhaps where do we need to go from, from here? We need to take a break, Prof. And when we come back, uh, we get our closing moment with Professor Ernest Ojuku on the way to go. We'll also be joined by a former minister uh, uh, of uh, water resources and a former deputy governor in Sokoto State, Mokta Shagari, who we'll dig deeper on the consequence of today's judgment on the independence of the judiciary. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Our closing moments now with Professor Ernest Ojuku, Senior Advocate of Nigeria and Professor of Law. Thank you so much, Prof, uh, for your time tonight. So you're giving us a breakdown for uh, Nigerians to understand what this uh, yeah. uh, judgment is all about. Uh, we're hoping that uh, in the days to come, we'll get a full picture of uh, the judgment. But in context, how does this play out within the purview of constitutional amendment that is ongoing? Well, you see, uh... You can amend as, as, as much as you want. You can amend all the parts of the constitution. 
without a human being, we won't go anywhere. And this is an example of how an amendment, an amendment of the Constitution is not our first roadmap. It is a human being that's our problem. Hmm. For, this is an example where the states have refused to obey is the simple provision of the Constitution, giving fiscal autonomy to them. Does this take away the fact that they clamor for more powers? Sure. I mean, in Nigeria, does it, I mean, is it, is it not a fact that the state has less powers compared to, yes, to, it, to it the is, federal government? Yes, it is. In fact, the, the, what the general, if you look at the Constitution in general, you find that based on our provisions now, the state, the government, government is like a unitary government, almost, hmm. uh, giving most responsibilities and authority. So to we the don't really government. operate a federal system Not fully. in the rural sure, sense of sure. it. Sure, And that's why it's sad that for this little avenue for, imp for implementing state autonomy, the states have abused it. That's, that's, that's the, the saddest part of our constitutional development. Mm. The, the little opening for a certain state autonomy, the states have refused to I said it, and I have rather abused it. So the contest between the federal, the central government and the federating unit is what seems to be playing out in the state where the executive arm of government in the state has an overbearing uh, uh, role on the legislature and the judiciary, sure. which the president said he wanted to correct. Sure. But how do we, on the final note, Prof, how do we correct this whole thing? People have been clamoring for restructuring. Yeah. What is exactly the way out? Well, it's a political decision at the end of the day. Uh, we have to, we have to, the civil society, the entire, they have, we have to rise against our governors and our legislators. Our governors are a problem in Nigeria. I can tell you the truth. The general principle of backwardness and the lack of uh, good governance today is more in the states than at the federal level. We, the state, the states have, have strategically, you know, uh, diverted the attention of the masses from themselves to the federal government as the problem. The problem of Nigeria are our governors, not the states, not the federal government. So how do we fix it? Well, we have to do We have a confab report that is not implemented? Oh, sure. It is now left to us, the, the, those who have been ruled, to rise. Because there's need for more and more civil uh, um, awareness and engagement, that as, more than we have had now. We have left our leaders, the legislators, the governors alone for too long. To, to manage us irresponsibly, if, if you allow me to use that word. Mm. There's so much they have done to our system that if we don't correct it, our democratic uh, uh, dividend will never be achieved. Professor N.S. Ojuku, Senior Advocate of Nigeria and a Professor of Law, thank you so much, Prof, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate your thank time. You so much. Thank you so much.